attending a funeral about someone that's an identical twin. It's extremely weird. Griffin ran up to his brother at the funeral and said, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> It was literally like a light bulb moment. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I don't have an answer. I don't know why I'm sad. I haven't felt like this in a long time. And then it dawned on me. First period in nearly five years. When it comes to mommy makeovers, maybe plastic surgery is worth it. So you're not sitting there at the pool thinking about your belly, but then maybe it's not okay to fix the exterior. You just got to fix the interior. Welcome back to Unplanned. I'm Matt. And I'm Abby. And we're so happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have not done a solo episode in a couple weeks. It's been weird. It's More been really weird. More than a couple weeks. It's been like a month. Had some really unfortunate circumstances, obviously. Yeah, um, I, I kind of dipped out of the podcast for a couple weeks. Our family went through a loss. We lost my papa. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I haven't cried about it in like honestly a couple weeks. But yeah. I think it's just saying it with like all the attention. Yeah. I do feel peace that it was like his time. So yeah. basically, let's just tell a story of what happened. So other people that are going through grief, just know that you're not alone and that it might look like, you know, we're only showing happy, cool things, but there are sometimes some like deeper things going on. Um, whew. But I kind of kept that time private. So what happened was we randomly got a call on a Sunday, actually right before you were about to interview Clayton for that yeah, episode. It was like an hour before. It was like literally right before he's about to show up at our house. And we got the horrible news that your grandpa had gone to the hospital. Yeah. And obviously things weren't looking good. But I didn't we know just, this at the we, time, but he'd gone septic at this point. And we, yeah, we didn't know that. And we had just found out that he had cancer two months before. So it was, it happened really fast. I think that they were thinking it was cancer for a little bit longer than that, but it wasn't like official for, I, honestly, I think it was like November. And Christmas was great that we got to see him. We got to see them two times in December. Yeah. Because we were there um, for Blake's graduation, my brother's graduation. They made it there and we celebrated Christmas with them. And honestly, I'm so thankful that we had that time together because... <clears throat> Honestly, like... It was cool that he got to meet his great-grandkids. Yeah, like multiple times. He got to yeah. see them a lot. Um, wow, it's kind of just like now hitting me that we're talking about him in the past. Tense. Yeah. Anyway. I'm so I feel sorry. like I'm telling this really bad. No, you're not. No, you're not. As you're just sharing your story and you're doing... No, you're Yeah, good. so we found out a couple months, a little bit over, more than a couple months ago about his cancer diagnosis and i found out on christmas day that it was palliative care that they were going to be giving him which basically means from what i understand that they were not he was never going to be cancer free and so they were going to make his quality of life comfortable for the remainder of his life so it wasn't a total total shock i think that the speed with which everything happened was shocking yeah and for shocking for everyone i'm sure even his medical care team too so um we were staying in close touch i've been close with my grandfather my entire life should i even talk about like how my relationship no, with yeah, papa was like yeah. i don't know how much you want to focus on this, well, this it, was, episode. it was really it was it was really sweet because we had your relationship was really close with your papa yeah and you would spend every saturday night at his house um, no, I'm sorry. Every Friday night, right? Every yeah. Friday night. Well, we were there Friday night to Saturday morning, um, Sunday lunches, uh, Wednesday evenings we get dinner and like, we just like, they lived five minutes away from us. They were at every single dance recital, you know, play or musical I was in, sports when I did that, all my brother's sports, every school event, every choir concert, like they were there and we honestly were like, they were like our friends too. And that's why they've like shaped me so much who I am as a person today. I think a lot of people that are like close to me in my life, I don't know if it's reflected on the internet as much, but like I'm kind of like an old soul in a no, way. You guys, Abby gets her quirky, <laughs> silly side from her grandpa and her grandma. And that's why she is such a silly, fun, unique person because she spent so much time with her grandparents and they rubbed off on her. And that fun, just happy joy that they have is 
a part of Abby. Yeah. Because of all the time that she spent with her grandparents. Literally, like, some of her closest friends here in Arizona call me John. And that's because of my papa indirectly because he always said, um, that's some who shot John. Yeah. Comment down below if you've heard that phrase before because anyone my age I've ever said that phrase to, they are like, what in the world did you just say? I don't think anybody knows what that is other than your grandparents. <laughs> I, it was like so normal to me growing up like if someone said something that that i think they made up it would be like well that's some who shot john yeah and so i say those things they just like shaped who i am as a person like my humor my um interests even like everything they your grandma would read so abby's grandma would read to her all the time and abby would just sit and read book after book with her grandma and now Abby's a bookworm. Like she's always reading a book. And yeah, literally everything about Abby is influenced because of them. Yeah, so many things. And um, yeah, we were just incredibly close. I mean, even when I moved away to go to college and beyond, like calling very frequently. And I think the coolest thing is that we actually FaceTimed him two days before his passing. Two days. And um like that evening yeah honestly it's like less than 48 hours before he was gone after that but um and oh sorry no go ahead i was gonna say what was weird is something came over me i don't know what it was i think it was just knowing that your grandpa had been to the hospital recently and so i was like i was just realizing okay we're not gonna have forever with him and realistically a couple years from now he probably won't be here anymore and so i was like he needs to spend time with his grandkids. And so we're, I FaceTimed him, which like I n- usually wouldn't do. You would always be the ones, well, the yeah. one to initiate the FaceTime. But I FaceTimed your grandpa and literally just had the phone on Griffin and Augie for probably like an hour. Like he just watched them play. I was playing with Griffin and Augie and kind of chatting with him, but basically just having him there with us like in the room playing we're we went out to the pool and griffin likes to throw our basketball into the water and then i would take our pool net and you know get it out of the pool and then griffin would throw back in again and he would laugh every single time and then your grandpa was laughing with griffin every time he threw the, the ball in um and so it was just so cool seeing your grandpa be there in that moment and something told me was like I was like, okay, I need to keep this going. And I, I kept the phone call going so long that your grandma, your grandpa hung up on me because yeah. he was like, okay, it was so good talking. Let's, let's chat again sometime. Um, yeah. And I just, I just wanted him to really feel like he was there with his great grandkids. Yeah. And I'm so glad that he had that moment. And it's like, I hate that I'm so weepy right now because I really do feel peace with like, the timing of everything like obviously you never want that anyone that you care so much about to be gone yeah but i also did not want him to suffer and ever since i knew that the care was gonna look like that i feel peace that he's not suffering anymore and that he really didn't like he really lived life up to the yeah. last moments he was still traveling and he was still obviously life looked different he had a little puppy and now my grandma has this dog that i'm not sure she intended on like raising by herself basically but <sighs> i kind of threw that detail in there i'm so scattered right now but as weepy as i am i think there's something about the cameras that just like brings my emotion out for whatever reason but um of course i'm gonna miss him a lot and i'm just gonna say i was always the favorite (laughs) i think i was i heard i I heard him whisper that to you (laughs) i heard him say that to you we had a really special relationship one time you guys got lost on purpose grabbing coffee Right before we Phoenix. filmed the podcast episode. Actually, can you link that podcast? Yes, in we'll this? link we'll link the podcast down below. We had Abby's grandparents on the podcast. Um, and it was really special because we got to share their life story and it's almost like a like a memory that or like a vault, you know, like a time capsule. That's the word I'm looking for. For, you know, twenty years from now, when Griffin is twenty one. I can be like, hey, Griffin, this is your great grandpa that you used to call Papa and you probably don't remember him that much anymore, but this is this is who he was and this is the life he lived and he had polio when he was a kid and uh, 
he loved your he loved your mama so much and i think it'll be really cool for our kids to actually know them because i have so many people like my mom my my dad's mom died like 10 years before i was born i have no idea what she looks like i have no idea what her voice sounded like i don't know her story but our kids will get to know their great grandpa and that's that's really special that honestly means so much to me like that we have that now and like even our youtube videos we made with him like yeah there's there's a couple too it's like so so stupid they all seem so (laughs) silly and they are so silly and that's what's great because that's who he was and that's how our relationship was and like while they're entertainment for you guys like they're also very very meaningful to me especially now that story that you talked about basically getting lost with (laughs) getting coffee yeah yeah so right before we filmed that my papa loved chai tea lattes with skim milk that's what he would always get literally every single day and so before we filmed that podcast i bribed him i was like papa we'll get chai tea lattes with skim milk before we film and so we went on this big journey and matt's like calling me he's like um this is all set up like when are you guys getting back it's been like an hour and a half and we went and we were just like having such a good conversation in the car we kind of just got lost and we were cracking up and it was just a really sweet memory and he would always bring it back up to me because it was just like a really fun thing that we did and a good memory um also, it was, you it was talking sweet. about it was, it was sweet too because at the funeral, people were coming up to me, all your relatives that didn't really know how to use their iPhone that well, and they're like, "How do I? <laughs> yeah. How do I find that? Is that? Is it called a podcast? How do I find that podcast with Terry where he talks about polio? Because they yeah. had no idea. Like your grandpa, he was really open with us about his polio and like going through that as a kid. But that's not just something that you just you know you just chat about all the time, right? Yeah, and I so. Mean- um, all of your like a lot of your family members were just wanting to like listen to that episode and and there were quite a few at the funeral that had come up to us and were like hey I, I listened to that episode or watched the episode and um like thank you thank you for doing that because I, I like feel like I know Terry so much more now yeah and what's really cool is that the March of Dimes literally is a foundation that saved his life then and then at the funeral grandma had a March of Dimes uh fundraiser going on so that's really cool just so you guys know what march of dimes is it's a it's a charity which i'll be honest i forget what their current mission is but i know that basically they help save abby's grandpa's life because he had polio when he was a kid um the polio vaccine was out but he grew up in a really small town where they didn't quite have the vaccine yet um and so he never got it and then he got polio and he came you know, pretty close to not making it, but the March of Dimes uh, helped pay for his medical they paid care. Everything. They paid for everything. Yeah. And so it, it's crazy because it just kind of dawned on me while we were making this episode. Like we didn't really intend to like go into all these details, but I feel like we should do a fundraiser for March of Dimes. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, and so if you guys, yeah, if, if I don't know, whatever it is, if it's a dollar or five dollars, whatever you guys can can donate um that'd be really cool and abby's grandpa's honor to do a fundraiser for them and we'll donate too um Mm -hmm. that would mean a lot yeah um something else about the funeral is that um so like matt said griffin always called him papa like even griffin his great-grandson had a good really good cute relationship with him even though he was so young but something else interesting that i think we talked about on that podcast if you go back and visit it is that my papa was an identical twin and so his identical twin was attending the funeral and it's like a really sweet thing but also really sad thing this episode of the unplanned podcast is brought to you by huggies little movers and boy do we have some little movers in this house i just ordered some more little movers the other day because we ran out of the little movers yeah i know and now it's a little confusing because we have the huggies little movers that are in the lion king print and size four and size five yeah for those of you guys that don't know we used to buy the the cheapo diapers and we started getting blowouts galore and it got so annoying (laughs) having to like clean clothes I, I was just like out there honestly we tag teamed we both would clean the poop out of the kids onesies oh, and it got it got pretty I annoying cleaned my my share of yeah poop. We, we both did our share of poop cleaning you and know it's with the, the worst, stains because it's that yellow kind that just doesn't 
It doesn't go away. You said cheapo diapers, but the thing about Huggies Little Movers that's great is that they're also affordable. Yeah. So it's like you can get affordable diapers, but that are amazing quality. Yeah. You just want to look for quality in a diaper. And that's why we do like the Huggies Little Movers. Yes. Um, because Huggies knows that babies come in all shapes and sizes and their little tushies do too. And so what's great is that their best fitting diaper, it like curves and stretches to fit their little moving d- moving bodies and moms and dads know that there's nothing worse than an ill-fitting diaper so that's why we are thankful to huggies and what's really cool is that they actually have 12 hour protection against leaks which is an absolute game changer especially when your baby starts giving you longer stretches in the night we also have the huggies overnights for our toddler who who needs a little bit of extra leak guard protection in the nighttime yeah so. sorry, i got so distracted you look really pretty in your outfit so thank you honey to point that out so get your baby's butt into huggies best fitting diaper huggies little movers we got you baby we got you baby now back to the episode griffin ran up to his brother at the funeral and said papa yeah it's like i love it and hate it at the same time (laughs) you know and he was uh at your at your grandma's house playing with the golf cart Your, your grandpa liked to golf and so he was playing with this mini like miniature golf cart yeah um, was. and he kept going papa 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 and i'm like why like how does he know that he liked golf and i i guess your grandma had told him or told our son griffin that that little golf cart toy was papa's last time we were at their house yeah. and so um he just kept saying that over and over again um which was you know it, it was sweet that he was saying that but also really sad because obviously he's a one-year-old like he he doesn't understand that he's not here anymore yeah and he's not gonna really remember him which and, is a bummer and we're, we were going through a picture book the other day and uh he he still knows who his papa is like, yeah we I, have I, a book with pictures of people in our family and then every morning he like wants to point open that book and point to everyone and say their names in our family and he still points him and says papa um one more quick thing about attending a funeral about someone that's I, an identical twin. It's it's we, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's extremely weird. It's extremely weird. Like, it, it feels like they're still alive. You're like, wait a second. They hold sound up. the same. They look exactly the same. Yes. They have the same mannerisms. Like I was like, you are literally him, but he's not here. And so it's just like so. It's like why was it oddly comforting for me? It was comforting in a weird way. Was it just his voice or his yeah, like sing, it, it's seeing him? That someone yeah, exists that is just like him. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I need to stop crying because I'm actually like okay, guys. Like I took a break and it was really great. Like Matt took over so many things and I just like didn't do anything for a long time except for be with my family and it was really really good and I feel so much peace and closure with everything. I actually also got to speak at his funeral, which was something that I was like, I hate to say dreading because it is such like, it's deeply meaningful to me that I got to honor him in that way. But also it's so, anyone that's spoken at a funeral knows that like, while it is such like a important thing to you, it's also like a dreadful thing because you're having to talk about the most painful thing going on in your life in the most painful setting possible. I was so, <laughs> I, I, I was nervous because I was like, okay, I'm going to have to get up. And I, I thought I thought for sure you weren't going to be able to finish because it was, I mean, it's very emotional. It's very, yeah. very hard to do that when you love someone so much and to speak at the funeral. And so I thought for sure I was going to have to get up and finish Um your speech for you um but you you finish it and i was i, I was very i was very impressed i don't know how you did that i, I don't know how, taking, how you got through well that. first of all you know what i was doing here's my steps to not crying to speaking at a funeral one don't go in until you absolutely have to like yeah. i stayed outside of the room and just like chatted about casual things the whole time yeah secondly i did not really let you touch me or comfort me during the service yeah because i knew that was gonna make me like feel like i could break if some if you were like being strong for me so i just needed to be strong for myself and so i couldn't have any comfort even though you probably wanted to put your arm around me i was playing with your hair and i I did have my arm around you i kept but i like did not lean into or anything like i was like do not yeah and then i was holding water in my mouth and just like drinking water and swallowing it every single time i felt like tears were welling up in me and 
I was doing pretty good until I freaking played Amazing Grace, and then it just, it cracked me just a little bit, and then once there's a tiny crack, it can just, and that's what happened, but I got through it. What is your thing, you mentioned something to me, You, I think you said that you don't like open caskets at funerals, why is that? I mean, it's just a personal thing, like I don't, I want to remember him. Yeah. How I remember him. I totally because get that. Because even though they do a good job, like, I didn't just stare at him sleeping yeah. his whole life. He did fall asleep in his recliner quite a bit, but... I'll tell you what, though. It's so weird because it's like you feel like they're going to just sit up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't feel... It really does feel like they're asleep. Um, but for me... And, and but, some oh, yeah. level, it creeps me out. Is that bad to say? No, that's not bad to say. That's, I feel like, like I that's think it's totally an older normal. generation thing to want an open casket, yeah. honestly. I don't... Hmm. I want you to just cremate me. Oh, my gosh. I, I will say, though, I actually do. This is getting off topic. I do want to be cremated because I feel like it's cheaper and I don't want people like dishing out money for my death. Like what? Like I'm, if I'm dead, it's like, why spend all this money on me? Like go donate it to a Please charity. Please don't talk about you dying okay, now. Sorry. Okay. I'm like, Not that, the time. I would rather that money be donated to a charity. But anyway, I know it sounds weird, but I do like the open casket because it gives me closure. As weird as that is, I, I guess. I just was like surprised seeing... you cried as much as you did. Yeah, I didn't really. I didn't. I don't know. I, um. It was really sad. It was really, really sad. I think what really got me was just um, seeing your grandma and her sister. Like They were it, high school sweethearts, Matt. Mm-hmm. They were married for 56 it, years. It just, it's heartbreaking. It's like the movie Up. Like, I bawled like a baby watching the movie Up when you see that, like, yeah. that couple going from being young lovers to literally the end. And it's just, like, the most heartbreaking thing to think about that happening. And, and I just, the amount of empathy I felt for your grandma and for her sister just like broke me so yeah it also makes me realize that like whatever thing we get hung up on is really not that important you know because like i don't want to make this so sad but like i'm sure my grandma would do anything at this point to be 25 year old vicky and terry yeah they wouldn't want to waste it on some stupid bickering you know yeah not that we've been bickering or anything but like that happens you know and yeah. it, it just really puts your marriage in perspective to see you know the end of a marriage in a way like that and so oh it's, it's horrible um i mean I, I don't think it's i don't think you can justify not loving someone because of the pain of losing someone because no. like then what what is life like if you if you never love anybody or never yeah put yourself out there and and i don't know have a relationship with someone that's going to be a really really depressing life and so you you have to love someone you have to love people you have to have friends and community but at the same time lose when when you lose that one day it's it's extremely hard so it's just i don't know it it definitely put things things into perspective for sure it did it did and um i honestly feel very happy with how the funeral and everything went yeah and uh we're bringing grandma out here by the time this podcast up podcast is up she'll have been here for a trip to just kind of keep her busy and see the kiddos and we're gonna you know treat her a little bit because she's gonna have her first birthday alone i do want to say as awkward as it may be when you see when you see a widow um or someone that lost their spouse don't be afraid to tell them that you're so sorry Don't be afraid to tell them that you're thinking about them and that you feel for them because I think it can be uncomfortable. Like maybe it's just easier to not talk about it and it makes you feel less uncomfortable and less stressed that you're not going to say something, you know, that might hurt them for whatever reason. But just know that by letting them know that you have empathy for them, it's going to go a long way. And yeah, grandma um, said that. I know it meant a lot because I I regret not doing that for your other grandma when she lost her husband um three years ago and it just i just never i just never said anything because it there was never it never seemed like there was a a perfect time to say something and um so i I just didn't i just i just never did even to this day i've never said i'm so sorry for your loss and i know that she i know that after three years i know she's while that loss was devastating for her i know that she has recovered and i know that she's doing She's, I don't want to speak to your, what your grandma, yeah, but I, I just know that like time does heal people. Um, but I regret not saying something to her I mean, and, I'm, not and I'm glad fully. that I said They'll something. always be a hole. Yeah. Yeah. 
But we'll have time to talk about Grandpa to her because she's moving out here in a week. You're right. You're <laughs> We're right. getting our whole family out here. And let me let me just say this. If you go through a loss, please surround yourself with family or friends or someone to work through it. Don't go through it alone. Um, just seeing you go through this with your family was so much better for you than when we were in Hawaii with not a lot of friends and no support, no family. Yeah. Um, so like that boss. I mean, it was grandpa, a totally different experience. To- totally different. And having kids too. I was going to talk about it that. It really lightened the mood. It lightened the mood of the visitation, of the funeral. It was still so sad. But like having little kids that are just like laughing and playing just kind of gives you hope. It's like, yes, this is horrible. And yes, death sucks so freaking bad. But the fact that we have these like new little kids that are also our kids and they're freaking adorable, it just makes everything so much easier i guess right like i got a phone call that he had actually passed which was so crazy shocking because that whole day we were trying to get back trying to get back at the airport like begging oh my gosh i was begging i was crying to the gate agents being like get us on this plane they're like there's literally no empty seats what yeah what exactly happened because you left and then you came halfway through we didn't have flights because there wasn't really any good ones but there was or there was a couple of good ones, but they were sold out. But yeah, and so you, I was like, I'm gonna just go and try. Yeah, you went to the airport without a flight booked. We basically. were on standby for like three flights. Okay. And so you have to have some type of booking to get okay. through security. And so we were on standby for like three, and I was literally like, is it inappropriate to walk up to people and ask for their seat? Like Christmas vacation style, where she's like, I have this money for your kids' college. Like I'll pay. Like was it like that? Were you offering to pay people for their tickets, or what did you do? Well, I didn't do that, but I okay. should. I was wondering if I should have done that. Or not Christmas vacation. I'm thinking of Home Alone. You know when the mom in Home Alone is desperate to get back to her That's what I felt son? like. Should I have done that? Should I have like literally asked people? I mean, you could have. It's kind of a in, big deal in to re- change. In retrospect, as sad as it sounds, it wouldn't have done your, anything. It, yeah, your dad and your brother didn't make it back in time. Um, and they left way before you did. Yeah, so but. basically I was like trying and then there was like no more flights until later that evening. So we're like, we might as well just go home. And like I had the baby. So I was yeah. like give him a good nap and like make sure i'm packed okay because i just had thrown stuff in a bag it was just so chaotic but um as i'm getting that call that he had passed in between trips to the airport like i'm getting the worst news of my life and griffin just wants to play trucks with me and he's just like mama mama and like i can see where that someone that hasn't gone through that could see that as like how annoying like you're going through something so hard you have to just like white boogers from a kid's nose and play yeah. trucks but it was so comforting to me that yeah. like i could tend to his needs i could fix those because my needs were like yeah so big i don't know they're a wonderful distraction they're so i love spending for time everyone with them. too at the, yeah at the visitation every one of your relatives was coming up and wanting to see the kids and yeah play with them and um, I think for your grandma too, just to hold our baby yeah. and just like I don't, holding a baby is therapeutic. It's, it's very, it just yeah. fills you with hope forever. Yeah. I just, kids are just such a joy. Like yeah. truly such a joy. It's like specifically our kids. <laughs> <laughs> specifically our kids. <laughs> so having them there really was amazing and it made grieving a totally different experience for me than from before I was a mom. Thank you to Curology for sponsoring this episode of our podcast. My skin used to be pretty bad. I had so many breakouts going. I had pimples galore on my face. And luckily for me, one of my friends in college told me about Curology because I was lost and I wanted to find an affordable way to treat my acne. I filled out the quiz online. I ended up getting a formula specific for me and my skin's needs. They use three very specific ingredients that are able to treat and fight acne and help you honestly feel more confident. At least that's what it did for me. I started feeling so much more confident when my acne cleared up and I'm super thankful for Curology because they were a huge, huge part of that for me in my early 20s. Curology actually gives you personalized prescriptions that are formulated specifically for you and your skin. So for us, we were struggling with acne, but even they have personalized formulas for anti-aging or or anti-wrinkle, like whatever you're facing with your skin. Um, And they're more effective than 
just standard moisturizers and cleansers because they are made literally for you and your skin's needs. Yes. And it's super easy because all you have to do is fill out a quiz online, like Matt said, about your skin. You share photos and a provider will provide a personalized formula based on your skin's unique needs and they're shipped directly to your door every two months. For a limited time, you can get your first Curology skincare box for just $5 when you go to Curology.com slash unplanned. Go to Curology.com slash unplanned for this free offer. That's Curology, C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash unplanned trial is 30 days applied only to your first box subject to consultation new subscribers only back to the episode i love what we do because i got to just completely jump off the train yeah i didn't do anything for a long time and i'm really thankful for that and i just got to be with my kids be with my family and i'm really thankful to you for filling in all those large gaps for me at that time and also like doing what you could to be there for me and cover me of course of That's course. a really cool thing about marriage is that you don't have to go through these things alone. But also, even if you have a close friend or family, like you're not alone and you're grieving because a lot of people, unfortunately, everyone goes through loss in some capacity, and it's yeah. I was I was so sucks. I was so thankful that you were able to go back home immediately yeah and then i came the next day with our son that was actually flying with griffin was really fun we had such a fun time we were just chilling flying with was, augie was really really fun oh really he just slept the whole time okay well griffin and i got to play <laughs> together uh i got to read my kindle eventually like we were playing and i was trying to avoid doing screen time but then i was like okay this kid needs to miss rachel so we turn on miss rachel and he's watching miss rachel eating his um his pretzels and then i was reading my book it was great oh uh, yeah good times speaking of kids our kids have gotten to be so much fun so much fun especially our oldest i have like i can fully understand what he's saying now we just had three days together abby was traveling and she was gone with august and so griffin and i had like three full one-on-one days together and it was amazing Mm -hmm. and now he could be like and i know what it means i'm like oh you want to go to the park and drink some juice (laughs) and it's just it's so cool the relationship we have and i never understood how people could just like understand whatever their kid was trying to say but like now i get it we just literally my favorite people you and the boys are my favorite people in the entire world and i love them so much and and i'm so proud of them for literally every the smallest thing (laughs) It's just, it's gotten to be like really, really fun. And so, I don't know. I I love it. Like, so you're get, saying you want it, another? I'm not, no comment. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying being a dad is like really fun. And it's, if you're in the thick of the newborn stage and you hate your life, just know that it gets so much better. Some people love the newborn stage, Matt. Controversial opinion. Newborn stage, not my thing. Yeah, I honestly totally it agree. I, I, it's so hard on you as an individual, on your marriage, yeah. on everything. I, I feel like it's okay like when you're in the midst of a workout and you're really exhausted and you're you're like this is this sucks like this workout sucks but you know that you're gonna feel so good afterwards because you get the hit of dopamine and it's like worth it's worth the pain to make it to the end like okay, it's, you I get the reward say, I feel like that's the newborn stage truly where but, it's like this is hard but you go through it because it's worth it in the end but do you not think it would be different if you didn't have other things to do like say it was just us and a baby and that was all our both of our shared responsibility all we had to do was take care of ourselves and our baby I feel like it wouldn't have been as hard <laughs> yeah uh, I think it's other things in life that make that stage a little bit harder for, yeah I will say I think the times, so good. the times you get the most frustrated with your kids are when you are trying to multitask. So you're trying to like get something done that you need to get they done. They require 100% And then they're attention. pulling you away from it, especially if someone with ADHD. If I don't like fully lock in and get to be fully focused on something and I'm getting distracted by like this thing over here, then I, I literally end up, I can go hours without getting Wait, anything done. Wait, have you done. officially been diagnosed? I have not been officially diagnosed, but I'm so close. I'm so, so close getting diagnosed. I'm so excited. <laughs> What's going to happen then? I got, there's a, I got stabbed with a needle today in my arm because they um, they were checking my blood levels for my physical. And then they're going to be able to tell me if I have ADHD. Because of your blood? No, I think that... Okay, so I had literally three doctor's appointments. I did not know it was going to take three doctor's appointments. I think it's because it's been overdiagnosed. They make people... That and then I haven't been to the doctor in a really long time because they're just uh, like, I haven't had anything come up. So I'm like, I'm good. I don't need to go to the doctor. But, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, so I have a doctor's appointment later this week and then I think if they decide I have ADHD, then I'll get medicated. Oh, so you're going to take medicine now? I think I'm going to take medicine. Is that something you want to talk about also? I don't know if you... I don't care. Yeah, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm open to it. Um, 
yeah, I just, I get so easily distracted and I feel like I need to be more open with people that I do have ADHD. Cause I, I think sometimes like people will be talking about one subject and I'll completely change the subject. And I don't mean to be rude or unkind or like inconsiderate of them. It's just my brain does weird crap where you mention one word and that word makes me think of something else, which then makes me think of something else. And then yeah. pretty soon we're talking about like, you know, eating tacos. And then I'm like, hey, what do you guys think about the Revolutionary War? And it's like, wait, what can the? I tell you something? Yeah, what's Even up? Even during this episode, I could tell you were thinking about something else and what I was saying. And that's why I stopped that one time. Wait, really? Yeah. I'm so sorry. I did not mean it like that at I all. I know you don't. That's why I don't say anything because I know you don't mean it. I don't mean it at all. Maybe there's resources. And my for mom, when I was a kid, <laughs> spouses of someone hold, with ADHD. My mom would hold my hand and she'd be like, hey, Matthew, I need you to go do these three things. And I think she deep down knew that I had ADHD, but she just didn't want to medicate me, which is cool. I respect that. I actually don't. I want to try to avoid taking medication. Um, I'm also assuming that I have it. I'm like 99.9%. Sure I think you're it. a textbook case. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think there's a lot wrong with me. I actually think there's other stuff too that no. I need to get diagnosed. Truly, I do, which I can open. Maybe I'll open up about one day, but. Uh, what do you think you have? I don't know. I'll talk to you about it off podcast. But Okay, sorry. Um, that's been so, but it's been so good though. Like as an adult to understand myself more has been so freeing because I'm like, that's why I do that weird thing because I'm this way. Like mm. I am ADHD or I'm this and like just understanding myself more has helped me. Because it's know, your brain, right? Yeah. Yeah. It help, helps me like navigate life better. And that way I don't do things that I hate. Like, look, when you're navigating life, you there's no... There's no way around doing hard things, period. Some stuff that you do is going to be hard and then there's a benefit to it in the end. But the stuff that's hard that has no benefit to it, why would the frick would you do it? Like it, what? Like for instance, this is this is really weird, but like when it was just me and Griffin, I don't know what it was. I thought, hey, we could go, you know, get get like dinner together. Like you did that one time when it was when I was gone on a trip and yeah, you and Griffin, Griffin and I got, went to Noodles and Co like three times. But for whatever reason, I just knew that if I took him out to dinner, I don't know what it was, but I just felt like I was gonna get so much social anxiety, and I and I don't know why. Really? Yeah, because there was a time that I took him to Kava. It was just like a a dad and son date kind of, and I don't know why, but I just like really. That's I why you door dash. I get really in my head and I get anxiety a lot in social settings. I don't know what why. Um, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be intentional with him and go to the park and play and go on a walk and, you know, do all these other things. And then I door dash Kava rather than going there and eating it. Because I knew I was like, this is going to be less fun for me. I'm going to get social anxiety, which I like to push myself to do uncomfortable things because I know it makes me stronger. So sometimes like even if something's gonna make me really uncomfortable i'm like i need to toughen myself up so i'm going to make myself do it just because it is uncomfortable yeah but i've learned i've learned like when it's the right time to do that and when it's the wrong time and that's one of those times where i'm like i don't need to make myself uncomfortable right now i can just i can just fully enjoy this time with my son and that's what it's about it was about spending time with my kid and i didn't need to overcome some sort of mental obstacle i could just you know create the space i needed for myself to be fully intentional with griffin and that's what i did that's sweet. Yeah. I don't know how You're we... a really good dad. Thank you so much. Really I think you're a really good mom. They love you. You know, it's funny, Abby. I, I mentioned this right before we started recording, but I truly think part of this, I think it's two things. One, I think we've gotten out of the newborn stage with both of our kids. And so in those times, I feel like life almost felt like survival. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't really focus on myself or understand what my needs were. I was just, it was all about taking care of you and Griffin and Augie and now that I'm out of that I'm like okay who is Matt Howard like who who am I you did go through an identity crisis right um and so I've just been discovering that and I think part of that too is my prefrontal cortex is fully developed okay, now explain that can we talk about that um I love science I love I love using facts and like looking to yeah just like research to learn about myself and how our world works and how people work but okay. um i'm a fully developed human now and i i truly believe i beg to differ i'm just kidding okay. <laughs> but i truly believe that's been a part of why i'm learning i'm learning more about myself and i'm learning more of like what i like and what i don't like i'm not gonna put myself in situations so you're saying now you're gonna get stuck in your ways no but like look 
I want to be a selfless person. I want to do good in the world. I'm passionate. I'm passionate about making the world a better place. I hope that we can create a, a better world than we found it when we when we go one day. I truly want that for our country and our world because I just care about humanity as a whole. And so this is getting really deep. But yeah, um, I got really deep for a second. But there. like, <laughs> I'm sorry. But that aside, because I want to do selfless things, which don't don't serve me anyway, right? Like. I, I want to donate to March of Dimes. Why do I want to donate to March of Dimes? Because I love their mission and I love what they did for your grandpa. Does giving my money away to them do anything for me? Not really. Maybe it makes me feel better about myself. Like maybe I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm a good person because I donated. Great. But truly though, I think it's just, I, I want to live in a world where people can be generous and I want to live in a world where people can like support one another and love one another. And so I want to, I want to be that. Like if that's what I want to see our world be, I want to I want to embody that. What does this have to do with your prefrontal cortex again? Don't know. Kind of got kind of got off track a little bit there. <laughs> I think that's all good stuff. I guess I guess what I was trying to say is, while I want to do stuff that um, makes the world like wh- while I know what's going to serve me and what's not going to serve me, and it's like oh I'm not going to just like go to I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm going to get a lot of anxiety because oh, I know yeah. it's not going to benefit me. It doesn't I still, mean you're selfish. I, I, yeah, I'm still going to do good, and our, I, I still want to do good stuff, even if it doesn't benefit me, because I just care about our world. That was kind of like a really long way of saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Kind of got just get so deep, and I love a little, you for it. A little too deep. I don't know how to expand on it. Sorry. Can we like talk about something fun? Yeah, I'm tired of crying. Sorry about that. I haven't cried about that in like two weeks so it's like what the Dude, heck we should talk about this you just got your period back for the first time oh speaking of crying <laughs> it wasn't really matt do you understand it wasn't like actually a period how much did you bleed like was there a lot of blood <laughs> no like i didn't even need did, it. You, did you see any blood just when i went potty that's it yeah it you was didn't even so have, extremely you didn't light. even need like a, a like anything no, no feminine no, hygiene products at all no hygiene products. really then how is that considered a period well, I'll tell you why. There was all the PMS symptoms yes. and cramps and a tiny bit of blood. It was funny because when you were experiencing all of that, I'm like, I was racking my brain because as a guy, my go-to is like, how can I fix the problem? I need to know. How have you not learned that sometimes there's not and a solution? And I reminded myself that. I was like, wait, Matt. I was like, Matt, stop trying to fix it literally just talk to her and get to know how she feels you did that you did and amazing so i was asking you questions about how you felt and how it was making you feel yeah and eventually what you realized from your feelings yeah you made me realize it i did you walked me to it okay I here's helped, how it I happened helped, i helped lead you to the answer here's how it happened let's go i didn't even, let's do a high five we went to canes we actually walked to canes and we <laughs> ate canes and as i'm walking back i'm like i don't know i already had like a little bit of a crazy dinner, like chicken fingers and fries and soda, but I just need more. Like I need chocolate. And you got the ma- you got the big meal. I got the huge meal. You got I the Kaniac combo, I think, which has six chicken tenders. I did eat two of them. Yeah, I I ate my my meal, but I just needed. It wasn't about like hunger. It was about a craving, like a crazy yeah. craving. I was like, I absolutely need chocolate. And so we were, we got a bag of peanut M and M's. I ate the whole thing. How many times have you ever seen me just sit there eating chocolate? Not very many. I don't, I mean, I'm not like a healthy eater. Like I'll eat dessert every night, but when do I just sit there and eat straight chocolate? Like basically never. Yeah. And so that was weird, but you know, not enough to like raise major alarm bells. Mm. This episode is sponsored by one of our all time favorite baby brands. And that is Dreamland Baby. And we like them so much. We even get them as gifts for our friends. Oh yeah. We've bought a lot of sleep sacks in our life. It's so much more than a sleep sack because it is really giving a parent the gift of sleep. Yeah. Yes, you if you're a new parent, you know how frustrating it can be when you're not getting sleep because your kid is waking up all the time. And what's nice about a gently weighted sleep sack is they help calm your kid down. They it just, just feels overall... like they're getting a hug exactly. basically all night long. Yeah, it's like it's like a warm hug. They feel so snug in there. I always say snug is a bug and a rug. And my it... mother one time didn't put her kid in her sleep sack on accident and they slept horribly. Yeah. So our kids just love them. Oh, it's literally religion. We put them yeah. in their sleep sack if they're taking a nap or going to bed for the night. Yes. No if, ands, or buts. Dreamland has this really cool cover calm technology. It's gently weighted in the front, but they can still move around in it. They can roll over in it. They can stand up. They can even walk 
walk a little bit in it. Um, and it allows for deeper sleeper for you and for your baby because it helps babies fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. They also have these two-way zippers that are really convenient for middle of the night diaper changes. Yes, I was just using the two-way zipper the other night because I was like, oh crap, I don't want to take them out of their sleep sack for the diaper change, but I didn't have to. I just used the two-way zipper, boom. We used... Um, the same sleep sack slash swaddle for the first like almost six months for both of our babies and now i just washed it for the last time because i'm Wait, shipping it to a friend that's having that's a baby so boy sad. they will last you through multiple children they it's an amazing investment i cannot say enough good things about them i love dreamland baby and right now if you go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code unplanned at checkout you'll receive 20 percent off site wide plus free shipping this offer is for new and existing customers Back to the episode. Next day, we're sitting there talking with somebody and a crazy cramp just freaking stabs me in the ovary or whatever it is. And I'm like trying to keep the conversation going and not let on that I am about to double over in pain. And so I'm just like, man, what's going on? And then I finally told you, I was like, man, I keep having these crazy cramps. I don't know what's going on. Several hours later, we put the kids to bed and I'm like, Matt, I don't know what it is, but I am just so sad there's literally no reason for me to be sad right now like yeah. i am just so overwhelmingly sad and you're like that's when you were like well do you want to just talk about how you feel yeah i'm just sitting there i'm like i don't have an answer i don't know why i'm sad i don't know i haven't felt like this in a long time and then it dawned on me it was literally like a light bulb moment first period in nearly five years can you believe that five years you know i, did, I you didn't had miss one. it you had one because you got your IUD out right before we and started trying for kids. And I had one cycle. And, and then we had one cycle. Griffin. That is truly crazy. <sighs> I know. I don't miss it. And I don't even really count this one except because it's not like a normal one would be. Mm-hmm. But I had all the PMS and that was enough for me to be like, I don't want any part of this anymore. And your, it's funny. Your smartwatch knew that you were on your period yeah, too. Yeah. It kept saying, remember to track your symptoms. And I had never put in my my anything on my phone or on my watch that i was getting my cycle i kind of love that i have data now on my wrist to tell me about like what my body's doing because last night i couldn't sleep and i'm i was like i wonder how much sleep i got and sure enough i got five hours my sleep score was 43 (laughs) percent so it's kind of cool that your watch is like yeah you're pmsing it was so crazy it It was like a light bulb moment were you bummed when you got it then i didn't really care okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i mean it's just it's a thing it wasn't yeah. a big deal it's just a kind of a cool thing to i think i was actually relieved i was happy i got it because i was like why am i feeling this way and i couldn't and then it's just like i feel like so many women understand that feeling of being like why was i doing these things for the past three days and they're like oh there is actually a reason i'm not crazy and it's like we're always shocked by it yeah but then we have an answer it's amazing can we talk about new york city that was freaking the awesome. The Big Apple? That was freaking awesome, dude. That, that trip. Was. It was magical, okay? It was magical. You and I was freaking, so in love with you. You looked beautiful <laughs> in your dress. I think it what it was. I miss you wearing dresses. I just realized yeah. that. I just had an epiphany. Because as a pregnant woman, you haven't been wearing dresses because you were pregnant and breastfeeding. And it's hard to wear a dress and like whip your boob out to breastfeed your kid. Okay, how about when and I so, stop breastfeeding, I buy dresses again. I love it when you wear dresses. Because guess what, Matt? I've been pregnant for two years and I don't have any clothes from before then. You know what's funny? I feel like we both love it when the when like our partner is more in tune with their like their sexuality, their masculinity or femininity. Yeah, I like it when like, you're more masculine and yes. you like when I'm more feminine. And like, oh, I just love when you embrace I, your when you embrace your femininity. I it's just, love it's being so feminine. Sexy. It's I love so being sexy. feminine. It's not because you want me to be. It's because I actually love being a woman. And that's how I feel about being a man. Like I, I've been hitting the gym so much more recently, mm. and I feel more masculine than ever. I feel. Do you feel like a protector? Yes, and Ooh. I feel strong, and it's just like. I don't know. I, you know it, what it's also, like almost like an animalistic thing. It's weird. I'm like, okay. why do I love pumping this iron Scary. so much? But it's just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm a man and I've got okay. my woman and I've got okay. to protect my lady, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 Me and Griffin do that. We say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. You know what else has made me more feminine? What? Reading a romance book. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of got me a little. How? What's your, what's your hot take on that? Because I know some women are like, that is just too... I don't like those books. They have too much sex. I will say, I actually... 
don't like the saucy you stuff don't like as the much. sex books not really <laughs> okay why not? but it's just for the reading value i'm like this isn't like i appreciate a book because of a good story and usually a like just a sex scene in a book doesn't feel like it's a part of the story it just feels like it's there for sex appeal can i be honest i love a good rom-com that's why I want to watch rom com tonight. But you don't love a good rom com. Where is this coming from? I actually from? realized this. No, you're wrong. I love it. <laughs> now you're wrong because it ends up getting me late. <laughs> no, no, it's just it's great it for the whole family, dude. You, you like I don't know. It it does something for both of us. Like we just get the chemistry just freaking ignites. You when know? is the last time we've watched one? I don't know. This is us. I just can think back to we watched the notebook with my parents and they're both sobbing and we're both watching it. Like none, neither one of us cried. I don't know why, but my parents were bawling. I think it's because I fell asleep. Watching the notebook. You did fall asleep. That's what Otherwise, it was. Otherwise I would have been sobbing. And I'm like, okay, I missed my opportunity. Like Abby's asleep. And so I don't know what to do, but no. Uh, like your parents? What do you mean? I just, I remember them crying during that movie. Anyway, I love a good rom-com. Oh, you missed your opportunity to cry? no. Just other stuff because we we didn't have the chemistry because you were uh, you fell asleep so the the chemistry well, wasn't there because you were literally. When is the last time we've watched a rom com? Where is this coming from? Are you talking about when we watched This Is Us? Maybe we never watch shows or movies. We're not one of those couples. What's the movie? We we've been reading movie our Kindles up, like crazy. We ended up like ha- like doing it after watching a movie. I, I feel like there was some steamy scene, and then we were like, "Wait, we can make our own steamy scene." Okay, getting back on track. <laughs> um, we don't watch shows. We read Kindles, and I've been reading a. Uh, it's Romance. been so good. We've both been reading books together in bed. Yeah. I've been lapping you with books, though, I yep. will say. Yep. How's your book going? My book is is great. I read Hunger Games, and now I'm reading my, uh, Catching Fire. <laughs> and I, I did actually went and saw the Hunger Games movie, The Fire of Song and Ice, or whatever it's called. Songbird something. Song The Songbird something. It's the Origins movie. Birds That's, and Songbirds? No. Nope. We completely botched all of that. I know that for a fact. <laughs> But the movie just got me back into wanting to read the books. And I'm, you, we already talked about this. We almost walked out of the movie. And it's you, disturbing you, to me. Because kids it's, killing it's, kids. it is really disturbing with kids killing kids. Kids but having to I've, kill kids. What I've realized, Abby, is kids are so, like seeing our one-year-old, he is so smart. He's so intelligent. He's a genius. As a 12-year-old, I was reading these books. I'm reading books now as a 25-year-old man. But do you think that's man, okay? That I read when I was 12. I, I think it is. I think when I was 12, I was fully comprehending what was going on. It wasn't. It's not as dark. I think the movie that we saw was a lot darker than the books themselves, truly. Um, See, I don't know, though, because I, I some of the most scared I got as a kid, I would get really scared for movies, from but books. some books really scared really? me. Yeah. That actually, I'm glad you brought that up because I would like to read the book It. I think that'd be really We could read it together. I've been kind of wanting to read that one. I think you'd get too scared. I don't know if you should. I'm tough. I read Stephen King already. <laughs> That's right. You read that the S- Summers. Billy, Billy Summers. Summers. Yeah, I'm gonna read the Green Mile too. I think he wrote that one. Yeah, you really um, do here's like. Here's my book as I've read. Actually, this will become a reading podcast. Can I talk about this on this podcast? Yeah. yeah. Go okay, for it. I started reading the Akatar series because everyone's been talking about it, and I'm very late to it. It's a Court of Thorns and Roses. It's a fantasy book, and you know what? Up until 92 percent of the book, because I have a Kindle, so I know what the exact percentage I'm on. I was like, I don't know about this. It's a very, it's very outside my normal wheelhouse of genres that I enjoy reading. It's very fantasy. It's kind of strange. Then from 92 percent to 100 percent, it changed. I was like, I love this series and I'm probably going to read every single one. The story, the plot is so thick. You have to read. I told you, Matt's going to read it too now. Yep. Did your ADHD just do something? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I got I sidetracked. I like, I kind of zoned out it's there okay. for a second. Sorry. It's okay. And I, we've already talked about it. Yep. So you didn't need to tune into that. Give me nux. I Give love nux. my ADHD husband. I'm cracking up, dude. It looks like Next. you. It, I don't, yeah, you're. You're, yeah, my self tanner's pretty your bad. Your self tanner did not go well. On it your did hand. not go. To, it did not go well. Um, it's because I'm kind of careless with <sighs> application. Next book I read. Do you care anymore about my books? You, you just tell me. Go for it. I've been reading Magnolia Parks, which is a viral TikTok romance series. Hold up. Talk to me about that. There was a romance book that you read that you said was so explicit you could literally open up to any page and it was like it wasn't romance then, it was actually a thriller it was like then he licked me like it no, got no, no. it, it so got crazy. really crazy that's colleen hoover everyone Co- knows colleen. everyone listening to this knows about colleen hoover so hold up though because you've told me that you'll like run into some like sweet like you know very yeah I mild, say, mild-mannered gal yes, why and she'll be like, she'll be like shy lo- <laughs> sweet ones that like are into the sexiest books <laughs> you know what it is I think they probably don't open up enough, open up enough, so then they are able to express that side of themselves Ooh, by reading 
reading yeah, a book. Yeah, I like that for them. I am someone who's not very emotional. And so for me, I can experience emotions oh, through music. Oh, you need very high emotional yes, music. Yes, so that's why I love, you're like, Matt, why are you listening to so you many sad songs? You know what, that's probably songs. true. I feel like it's the single girlies that like love her the most. Yep. Because it's like that is fulfilling something. Yes. It's Ooh. whatever, it's like the opposite to track sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Because you're emotional. I'm not that's as much on the outside. That's why even kill. Yeah, and so, I don't know, that's why I listen to a lot, I, I listen to very highly emotional music, because it kind of helps me experience those okay, emotions. Okay, then tell me why I need to read about murder. Are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, why, why are you trying to do that? Why, are, like, what's, no. what's your agenda here? No, it's never the wife killing the husband. I think maybe I'm trying to protect myself. I will say, I am with you on that. Because I read The House Across the Lake. Yeah. That one's so good. It's stimulating to read a crazy story like that where people are, yes. are getting murdered. It's, Everyone it, should it's read The House Across the Lake. I will say the one thing, the reason why it's not like a five out of five for me is because it was paranormal. I am like that, Abby. That kind of weirded me out. I like to have very deep intellectual conversations with people because it's it's <laughs> stimulating for my brain. I, I'm not very good at small talk. I feel like yeah. I could be better. I like to jump into... Like legit, I don't talk about this on the podcast because I'm trying to like, you know, keep it, you know, tame. But like I'll jump into like religion and politics with people like pretty quickly because I love Every to have time. Those, I love to have those conversations. Yeah. And I love different perspectives. I love yeah, it. Yeah, but you know what? It is a little off-putting if it, you just it can meet be, somebody yeah. and but I, sometimes I, I'm around you. I'm actually always around you yeah. and you always do that. And I'm like, oh, here we go. But I love different perspectives and I love to challenge everything that I believe. I love to always like think, what if I'm wrong? What if my perspective on a certain issue is completely off? And I like to think about that. So for me, that's why I skip the small talk and go right into the, mm. the deep combos. Mm-hmm. See, me, I like to I like to small talk. <laughs> I you, like deep conversations also. I feel like you've also. helped me get better at small talk. Really? I feel like I wasn't very good at it and I feel like I have, even well, though Matt, I'm I still not what, the best. I think the thing is, is you can definitely get deep with people, but you, you, you need to do, you need to ease into it a little better. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a little dramatic and yep. then I'm like, oh. You're right. It, right. I think it's just a, it's a comfort thing. Like let's, let's go but, through the small, get to the medium, then we can go deep. But my superpower though is because I like to get deep with people really fast, that does make for interesting interviews on the podcast, which by the way. I used to do before mm. I was even a podcaster. I literally would just... You would literally interview everyone that we met. Literally people sitting next to me on an airplane. I'd, I'd get their whole life story because I yeah. just want to know. I just, I genuinely wanted I to know. I started to do that more actually. I talked a lot to a lady. It's because of kids. Yeah. They make you talk with the people around yes. you more. And I actually really like that. This lady I was talking to on Dogs the do that too. If you have a kid or a dog, you just naturally talk to more people because it gives you something to talk about. I think we need to get a dog. Let's talk about that off podcast. Here's why. <laughs> Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. As parents, I feel like we can never get time to ourselves to like cook, clean, do things that we just need to also, do. Also, why would we want to? We just want to be with our kids. And that's why we love Factor because they have meals ready to go. They're fresh, never frozen, sent right to your doorstep. And they taste amazing. I personally love the sun-dried tomato chicken as well as their, their wellness shots. Oh my gosh, they're insane. Oh my gosh, people the, have been- the lemon. The lemon one. Stealing them. My dad found out how how good the lemon cayenne one is. That's my favorite one. They're so good. They pack a delicious punch. They just taste really good. I love a good wellness shot. They make you feel good, but their meals really are the main thing with Factor because they're chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You cannot beat that. I'm telling you. You just pop it in the microwave, delicious lunch. Literally, here's my process. Take the Factor meal out of the fridge, stab it twice to let there be like little holes in it, put it in the microwave, and microwave for two minutes and your food is ready to go it is truly the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required and they've done the math you guys factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious i will tell you there is nothing better than the gift of just a little bit of extra time and the fact is is we cannot be expected to make three meals every day it's just not possible and so save yourself the time of one of those meals just pop it in the microwave head to factor meal (laughs) dot com slash unplanned 50 and use code unplanned 50 to get 50 percent off that's code unplanned 50 at factor com slash unplanned 50 to get 50 percent off back to the episode here's why is because when i was when with my grandma like being yeah. left with a puppy because they got the dog with before they even knew about my papa's diagnosis they were on a wait list for this puppy and then they got the puppy and then he passed like less than a month later 
And then it made me wonder, like, would I take this dog off my grandma's hands? Because it, he was never meant to be her dog. It was supposed to be his dog. And so I was like, Matt, what do you think about this? And he, like, never had a definitive answer. <laughs> and that's okay because my grandma wants, and it turns out she wants yeah. to keep the dog for now at least. But if things don't go well, I'm like, would I? Because she doesn't like, she hasn't come around to him yet. I truly just don't want to burden your parents because I know that we travel so much that I think they would end up watching the dog Yeah, a lot. that's so true. Um, and so... Yeah. Like you can take your kids on a plane, but you can't take a dog. It's a lot harder to travel with dogs, surprisingly. Yeah, and also maybe this is just me because I'm a kid mom. Yeah. When dogs inconvenience me, oh, see now I'm gonna get hate from the dog what? people. I already what did it? this before. Why? What did you say? Because I said dogs aren't people. Oh well, they're not people. I know, but that made people offended that are like love dogs. Well, they're not people. I mean, like I like dogs. I value human life over dog. Some life. Some people don't. That is, I have a problem with that. <laughs> okay well, I do, humans are more valuable than dogs i period. know i know i know yeah. but just saying okay. when a dog inconveniences me it really is a little bit i'm like oh dang but when it's a human i'm like like a child i'm like oh that okay no big that's deal. something else that i've learned abby as a 25 year old with a fully developed brain i don't have to please everybody and it's been so oh yeah i i, I, used I got to, there before you you did I you did. got <laughs> you kind of taught me you kind of led me Toward the path or toward, toward the destination because I always wanted to be everyone's friend. I wanted everyone to like me. I never wanted to make anybody upset. There's and, nothing wrong with that. And I still am that way to an extent, but I've also recognized like I want to cut to the chase. Like if I'm meeting somebody new, I want to quickly understand if I think we're going to vibe. Because if we're not going to vibe, I'm not going to waste their time or my time trying to like make a fake friendship happen. I want to quickly figure out if we're going to be a good fit as friends. And if we're not, cool. Like we can we can still respect each other and yeah. be kind to one another. I tell another. you that all the time because I would, <laughs> I would hang out with people and then I'd be like, I don't really think that we're going to be close friends. And you'd be like, what's wrong exactly. with them? I'm like, literally nothing's wrong with them. It finally clicked for me, Abby. Because really? you, you got there so much. You got there like five years ago. Yeah. You've been there for a while. I, here's the thing that Matt and I had a conversation about that I will let you guys in on because we actually talk when we're not on camera quite a bit. Yeah, actually, we most do. of the time. We do, yeah. <laughs> but I, this was like a conversation we've had a lot, but like a long, starting a long time ago. Yeah. Where I was like, Matt, I think the difference between you and me is that I go about my day deciding if I like the people I encounter. Ooh, yep. And you go about your day wondering if the people you encounter like you. I'm a people pleaser. But the problem with that is that that's out of your hands is if the other people like you. Yeah. What's in your hands is if you like them or not. And that, here's the thing. You can, I say like, but I don't know if I necessarily mean that word. If it's like, oh, I think that we're a good match to be friends. There's certain people that are just not going to be a good match and there's nothing wrong with that person. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. And And I think part of it, Abby, is like, I, for whatever reason, there's certain social cues that I don't pick up on and you've helped me like identify those social really? cues. And there's just like certain, I think that's why I would get so much anxiety in high school and I would, I would literally, I couldn't fall asleep at night because there's so much pressure in my chest of like, that you had that. Of, of fear and like not feeling like I fit in and not feeling like I found my, my people. Um, and so... And I think part of that is just because like there's certain social things like I did not understand sarcasm at all before <laughs> yeah. before knowing your family. Yeah. I didn't at all. And I remember in high school there were times that people would be sarcastic and I think I took it I took it very personally and I got mad. And then I think it made people weirded out by me. Like why is he why is he like, we're just joking around. And then yeah. it made it made me an easy target. It made me easy to pick on. And yeah. I think like I've just re- I've just like learned so much and I've I've observed like how how people interact socially and I understand it more. Yeah. I understand sarcasm now. I used to not. Um I thought I did, but I didn't at all. And I think sarcasm's great. I love sarcasm. I think it's so <laughs> funny. I love to be sarcastic and with comments on dude, I'm so proud of this comment I made. You know oh, Zane? Gosh. You know Zane who had our who we had on our podcast? Yes. Zane Hajazi. He <laughs> just like posted pictures of himself like his body transformation he like went through this you know big transformation and he looks jack he looks so good and i <laughs> made it like a sarcastic comment i just said i'm keeping my wife off instagram for the next couple of days and it was the most like comment on his picture really yeah nice. which was like i was like i think that was 
It was sarcastic. I mean, I was, I was joking. You know, it wasn't well, actually that, real. Well, I know. Yeah. I understand that, was that that was sarcasm. I did, it. I did it. I was proud of that comment. That was great. Thank you. Okay. We're yep. going to high five now. Yeah, high five. Well, I'm proud of you. And that is Thank quite you. the uh, character arc you've had there. I don't know. I've also realized there's people that I thought were cool that like I wanted to be friends with, but they really didn't give me the time of day. And I've realized now I've like, I've, I've come to this realization of, I don't want to be their friend. Like if they don't want to, if they don't give me the time of day, I'm not going to give them the time of day. Like if, yeah. you know, I, I just, if someone's not being a good friend to you and, and is like, especially someone that just is full of themselves or is like kind of a narcissist, like why would you want to surround yourself with that? Why would you want to be more like that? Because whoever you surround yourself with is who you end up becoming. And so I want to surround myself with very good genuine people yeah. who have values that I align with. I feel like I've gotten so lucky. I've had like all my friends are so good. And you, I think you got there quicker than I did. I just, my people pleasing kept me from getting there. Well, Matt, I'm really happy that you're turning a leaf. <laughs> I think that that is cool. It's Do you cool want to know something when Matt? you find people that you truly vibe This has with. just always been my personality though, because what? I would always tell my best friend growing up, she, we always talked about this because we're still friends to this day since the fourth grade. I actually just went and visited her this past weekend. But I would always tell her in like fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, like when I was really young, I'd be like, we're so weird. And like I meant it in a like as a compliment. Like I loved that we were weird, like did funny yeah. things. And she would kind of get offended a little bit and she'd always clarify and she'd always correct me and be like, but weird in a cool way, right? And so she'd always say weird in a cool way. And so then I'd be like, we're weird in a cool way just to her to make her happy yeah. but it's just funny showing that like difference in personality there i like thought it was so cool to be weird i don't know why. <laughs> like i was just like i like standing out and being different i was listening to this this video uh today it you know it's one of those like i don't know philo- it's someone basically getting into philosophy was on instagram it's on youtube oh. it was very and it was stimulating for me and I, I loved listening to it but anyway basically talking about how people have all these like preconceived ideas of what they think they want and what they how people how they think people view the world and yeah. it was essentially talking about how what people really value deep down is personal fulfillment in their life people most people actually most people don't value fame and actually most people don't value money deep down most people value some sort of personal fulfillment but in our heads though we think everyone around us wants fame wants money wants power and they've and they were talking about in this video that that's actually not the case and i thought that was so good that they were sharing that because i kind of bought the lie like i kind of bought the lie that oh maybe the more money i make the happier i'll be or maybe the more you know the, the more followers i get the happier i'll be and it's a bunch of bs yeah and it, I, I think that you're truly happy when you find balance in your life yeah. or you're, you're going to be the happiest. You're never going to be perfectly happy. This is, we're not perfect people. This is not a perfect world. But I think you're going to be happiest when you find that balance between like work and play and being creative and, you know, spending time with your kids, your spouse. Like when you find a, a, a balanced life, whatever that is for you, that's when you find that, that happiness. Exactly. Yep. I love that. And I realized my life, that's another thing. My life before was out of balance. And I feel like I'm finding my balance now. Wow. And it's been so much better. I love this version of you. Thank you. Matt, it, isn't it, it feels you know good. what? I've loved you before you even had a prefrontal cortex. You did? Yeah, I loved you when you were just a little baby. I loved you before you had one too. Because be, when we were dating, you didn't have that. You know, I think girls get you, it earlier. You do. I think women develop theirs at 23, men at 25 on average. And that's like, that's an average age. Because think about puberty. People go through puberty around like 12 Do you 12-ish. think that I got mine before 23 or right at 23? <sighs> probably before. You were probably an, yeah. er, uh, an early riser and I was a late bloomer for sure. Early riser? Early riser, right? Early, is that what it Early is? bird. You got your prefrontal cortex before Early I did. Early to maturity? Yeah, you probably got it at like 22, 21. <laughs> okay. In there. Yeah. Um, I've loved you since before you had a prefrontal cortex, babe. That is very strange. And I have noticed you've changed a lot. You have? Yeah. In a good way? Is that a, is, Yes. It's been a good thing? Your prefrontal cortex is doing a lot for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and there's something specific that you're like, I like this new version of Matt. Just feel like you have your feet on the ground. Was there a certain event that made you realize that? No, I've honestly always thought like you really are just like a very good and grounded individual, even though it sometimes I'm like, when you're talking, I'm like, this is not coming across the way that 
it's not going to be perceived the way that he means it. Sometimes I say things and I'm like, I don't, I feel like I totally did not communicate what I was trying to say right there. But you're also a very good communicator. Eh, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I say stupid stuff that I'm like, ah, that that did not come out the no, right I way. No, I think everyone does that. Yeah. I do that too, all the time. You're way better with your words than no, I No, I'm not. You're way, oh my gosh, you're so much better. Can we talk about how my face looks different? Your face does look different. It's crazy how pregnancy does that. Yeah. Some people, when they're pregnant, they get to keep their face. No, I feel like everyone's face gets really puffy when they're pregnant. And mine got so puffy. It's crazy, actually. Like, when I look back at pictures, I'm like, oh, wow. You can I tell realize- that I'm pregnant. Even if my belly's not in the picture. Yeah, you can just tell. I feel like I'm still going down. I feel like your face is, Normal has now. gone back to what it looked like hmm, before pregnancy. Okay. Do you feel like you're back? Do you feel like you're full self again? Well, this is where I was going to talk about the mommy makeover. But... Oh, okay. Talk about your mommy makeover. What did you want to say about mommy makeovers? The thing is, is that I'm never going to feel like myself. You know, you know what it is? Do you know what my take on it is? What? I think people just want to... People don't like people having something that they can't have. And I think mommy makeovers, because it's not cheap, people that can't afford them are probably jealous. And I think that's why people have harsh opinions on them. Truly, I, I don't think that's have what it a is. harsh opinion. My opinion is I'm really glad that they're available for people that want them and are yeah. able to get them. But then there's me that is having an internal battle because. Like I, first of all, I feel great. I'm starting to feel so good postpartum. I'm six months out, almost seven months. I'm feeling amazing. I feel like I can start to do things I want to do again. The one thing that is a little frustrating is that I can lose the weight, but there's always going to be extra skin on my belly. Can I just hype you up? You look incredible. Thank you. Like you literally look so good. I cannot believe that you have birthed two children and you look the way that you look. Well, I mean, I appreciate that, but- you can tell the people. It's very clear looking at me, like my bare stomach. I've had a baby. I've had two babies. I mean, not really, honey. You look you look so good. Matt. And look, <laughs> obviously, you know, there's stuff that goes, there's genetics that go into this. I do think you have good genetics, but you work very hard and mm-hmm. you go, you work out five days a week and I've attended your workout before. <laughs> it is not easy. I left with very sore legs. I could not walk for the, for the next couple of days. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. That, there's where I'm coming from right there, right? Like yeah. I can work so hard, but there are things that is out of my power. Yeah. The extra skin on my belly is gonna is out of my power. And some people don't get that. I got that. I have wrinkly belly skin and it just kind of gathers at my belly button. Yeah. I have like a, like, you know, two, an angel and a devil on my shoulder. Yeah. And the devil's like, that's not fair. Like, you worked so hard. You should be able to have, like, a belly like you had before. But then the angel's like... Oh, you're talking about the women. I I remember you showed me these videos of people like years ago you'd be like matt look at this woman and she'd have like legit abs and then she'd pull her belly yeah and you could pull out like six inches because yes. it's like from having a baby and then my angel's like oh my gosh like this is just what motherhood looks like for you like you that is where you got to hold and grow your babies and watch me cry right now because <laughs> and like you're you're forever changed because of that mm-hmm. like that experience changed it like left a stamp on you and you should be proud of that so like i have this angel and this devil on my shoulder i just think every mom, when it comes to mommy makeovers i think every mom needs to make a decision for themselves it needs to if whether they do that or they don't it needs to be fully <laughs> their decision and fully be so and it doesn't and i don't think we need to demonize anybody i'm not doing that i think everyone should do what they want to do with that do if you want to if you have the means and you have the want to change your body after having a baby do that i think that's awesome i I think the danger that you run into with these like plastic surgeries and stuff is like if you are constantly it's getting a slippery slope if you're, if you're constantly getting work done then i feel like it shows that there's some sort of insecurity inside that you like need to go to therapy for or that's you need why to, i didn't want to get my teeth or done. you need to work through because i was like am i now gonna want to change so many things about myself but you know what every single day i look in the mirror and i love <laughs> my teeth i'm obsessed with them i love them way more than my natural teeth and i'm just like i want to smile more and i want to just like it's like I don't. It's like I don't even have to wear makeup because I have teeth that I love. I'm really happy that you love your teeth because you asked me so many times, <laughs> Matt. What should I do, Matt? What should I do? And I, I got the years for those of you that I, don't know. And I wouldn't give you an answer because I you was like, you never answered me because I was like, I. This is not my decision to make. You do whatever you think's best. Yeah, but my thing and is eventually, now. Eventually, what you ended up saying was what was holding you back. You were like, well, I want it. 
but I'm worried about what people think. Well, no, I also worried about myself too because I had put it in the same category as plastic surgery and uh, I'm not anti-plastic surgery for other people. There's a part of me that's anti-plastic surgery for myself. Now, don't clip this <laughs> if you see me in five years Abby, with Abby, new boobies or something. Abby, Abby's like, in five years, I got those Botox stuff and her face is like, what's the face you do? Your Botox face is so funny. But then here's my thing. This summer, am I going to wear a bikini? Yeah, I'm going to wear a bikini because... And you're going to look freaking good in that bikini. And I'm going to be natural. And you know what? There's going to be a weird belly button because I got extra skin and I had a double hernia. And you're going to rock it. And I'm just going to put it out there. Gonna I'm going to think about it a little bit. beautiful. But sometimes I'm like, maybe plastic surgery is worth it so you're not sitting there at the pool thinking about your belly when you can think about your family. But then maybe it's not okay to fix the exterior. You just got to fix the interior. I don't know. This is why I got an angel and a devil. Well, that's going to have to cut it off for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening to our show. We really appreciate you just kind of sitting on the couch with us. Until next time. See ya. Bye.